Welcome to Dentology, the Business of Dentistry podcast. In this podcast, we delve into the non-clinical aspects of dentistry with inspirational guests from across the profession. You will hear incredible life stories, pick up valuable business tips and be entertained. I'm Andy Acton and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Drevens. It's always good fun speaking to Shiraz Khan, isn't it? He's got such energy. I tell you what, he's, he's, I'm surprised he's got energy because he does so much, doesn't he? He's, a, he's such a nice guy with, yeah. uh, and just so generous with his time and his conversation. And, yeah, just mm. a lovely, lovely and chat. I thought the, the description he said at the end about kind of how to work towards goals, how to be prepared, um, I think people will take a lot from that. But I think the overriding thing for me is that he's put himself in a position of being uncomfortable. Mm. You know, it, it's easy in life just to keep doing the things we do because we enjoy them. But mm. he's purposely put himself in a position uh, of discomfort to mm. see how he can perform and how he can learn new well, things. Well, it's a bit like, do you remember that guy who said to us, if you are if you feel you're in control of the steering wheel, then you're, you're not, not driving, driving fast, fast enough. enough. Yeah, I and I know that he's motorsport, but yeah. it sort of does have a, it's has a hint of that. And, and But what was also interesting, I think, was that... The, it's okay to do that without maybe some super great destination and, yeah. uh, you know, not wanting just to be just for fun number one, but just to enjoy that moment yeah. and be in it. Yeah, And I think that's kind of um, quite a powerful message to give people because we were talking, weren't we, about how everybody has goals and ambitions and dreams and you've got to push for success. But also there's another part to the world that says, but you can just, have fun. Yeah. If you want to watch Netflix, watch Netflix. Yeah. You don't always have to be, you know, pursuing some big climbing mountains. ambition or something no. like that. Uh, yeah, so no, it's, very honest, and it's I nice think. to have him back on because yeah. obviously we talked about the dental side, and this was um, a dentist talking about another part of his life. No, it's it good, made really good. People take other things from it. So no, it's good, really enjoyable. So here we are again, and this time we have a guest returning to talk about a slightly different topic this time. Double guest. Double you, guest. You can tell by the way he's dressed as a clue. Yeah. He is, he is, yeah, he is. There's a little bit something going on, isn't there? There is. So today we have a um, dentist, lecturer, entrepreneur, and now a racing driver, Dr. Shiraz Khan. Welcome, Shiraz. How are you? I'm very well. How are you boys doing? It's great to be back. Yeah, things. Very, very good. Very good. Very good indeed. Very good indeed. You're yeah. looking good. You're looking good. You've got a smile on oh, your mate. face. You look like you're having feel, a good time. Feel great. Feel great. And look, do you know what? Look how far this has come. Uh, oh, I was on yes. one of the first ones. You're on like, what, yeah, like 600 podcasts or something, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, as, as, as we record this, we're, we're heading towards our 100th. So uh, oh, we're, amazing. We're, amazing. We're, up in, we're up in the 90s. Um, and, and people are still listening. They are in, in increasing in fact, numbers. Increasing numbers which we, are, is amazing. we are very grateful and more people listening, more people subscribing. So, yeah, it seems to be hitting the mark. And it's thanks to you and all That's the other guests that have come all on. to do because, with the guests, isn't it? Well, honestly, with a, a guest or well, a podcast without guests is just Chris and I chatting, which <laughs> honestly well, isn't yeah, as but much I, fun. I think, you know, tr truthfully, though, um, you know, and I'm, I'm a very avid listener. And sometimes it's quite difficult for me to, to tune in to, to other things. I'm so busy with life. But, I think what's really nice about this podcast in particular, it gives this very open slant of other skills and non-clinical mm. aspects of dentistry, right? So for me, I've really very much enjoyed people, life stories, people's you know, aspirations for business. Uh, one that sticks to mind is Ken Finlayson's, which was really lovely mm. to hear, you know, going mm. across to the other side of the water, being mm. a trailblazer for that, that really, that really sung to me. So yeah, great job, guys. Great job. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. as you know, we're not clinical at all. So for us to kind of cross into that field would be ludicrous. You know, there's enough people who are so highly experienced in that in that world. But whether you're a practice owner or not, everybody's in business. You need mm. good communication mm. skills. You need to understand how to lead people. And if we can share that through through, you know, this as a as a channel, mm. then then that's good news. And, yeah. and as you say, people's life stories are fascinating. Mm. You know, the, some of the yeah, things that you yeah. hear from people just your jaw just drops and you think, my goodness, you have had to overcome so much to have the success you've had. Really well, inspiring yeah. stuff. One of the things we didn't have on there for you, uh, Shiraz, is dancer. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah. say to anybody, follow Shiraz because he does do some little dance moves. I, 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 quite, I like, quite like them when they pop up on my Instagram and there you are, I don't know, wherever you're doing your, your moves. And I'm thinking, Flip, that's quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think you know, it's really funny is I, 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 I don't often listen to, to my stuff ever again, but I did listen to our first one 
together, uh, which is quite some time ago, at which point we were in the flat and I think we made a joke about, oh, bloody hell, it's that guy that just dances in the hallway again. He doesn't even live yeah. here. You know, that, <laughs> it was, it was, it's just it's some, some, some of these things are great. So, yeah, yeah, love doing it. Love doing it. Nah, so. It's good. It's good. Yeah, no, so so well. the last time we talked, we focused primarily on your your dental career, um, how you've got yourself to the heights that you are in dentistry. Um, but you've now uh, a new and growing passion for motorsport and you're driving in the Porsche Club Championship. So just tell us about how you got into it, your progress so far. Just give some context in terms of kind yeah, of... Yeah, perhaps, a, perhaps start off with what is it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 cool. So um, um, you say, I think the introduction is quite sound that you say that this new passion and, and, and love for... Uh, but actually this stems back to uh, a seven-year-old boy in school and you know they ask for a dream job and the hand goes up without any external influence hand goes up formula one racing driver like it was just like oh, it, wow. completely you know like a, a, a knee-jerk response and and, and mm. ultimately i was sitting there like well yeah I've, I'd, I'd love to do that in and, and you know there's this fantastic meme on on the social media which is um when you're when you're a young kid and you want to be a racing driver and then as you realize what it costs to own a car and what it costs to become a racing driver and how it's completely unaccessible, which might be a bigger mission in life in the future, actually, weirdly. Um, but how it's completely unaccessible for certainly the working class or, or, or those that, that may not have the finances to do it. So it's a passion that's existed for a long, long time. Um, but I have to owe huge thanks to my career in dentistry, my parents, my support, my wife, for 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 really allowing me to push myself forward in this because if it wasn't for my career this doorway would never open ultimately mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the support and as you can see I, I very proudly wear my sponsors on 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 my chest because if it wasn't for them I wouldn't be able to be here so mm -hmm. motorsport has been a, a passion of mine for ages what is a Porsche Club Championship openly for me it's the hallmark for uh, competitive racing in a in a club series and there's lots of i think you know when you get your motorsport license which we can talk about in a minute um you, you they give you a piece of paper that says oh there are uh, uh 30 000 different categories within motorsport in this country or something like that there's a figure of, of some nature wow uh, yeah, yeah yeah there's loads i mean from trucks to three wheels to two wheels to four wheel, like i mean it goes on like there's there's so yeah. many categories um but the porsche club i've been a part of because obviously i've and had quite a few road cars in the past and i've been doing their track days for a long time but the thing i can say to you is that the team are so well organized they're so encouraging of new people um we'll get into my first race later but i had a massive mechanical failure and there were other people going around like listen i've got this part spare available do you want it for your car i've got this part rather than being That's competitive nice. trying to push you out they're mm. trying to get you in the race mm. um so the Porsche Club Championship really is, is for me, the gold standard on how club racing should be managed. But also the great thing about it is it's really the bottom of the pyramid in terms of where you can go in terms of Porsche mm. motorsport, So, which is ultimately a goal in the future. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And uh, being a dullard, um, what Porsches do you drive? Uh, so I've had loads of, loads of Porsches. So uh, we, our family cars are McCann. We've got McCann oh, yeah. Turbo, uh, which is like the the, the family wagon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> family yeah. wagon. Right. Um, but uh, I've had various Caymans in the past and various 911s. Right. Uh, and what's currently, the, I drive is, a Cayman. It, does the Porsche Club all have the same car? Do you all race the same car? I assume so. Okay. Okay. So no, I, I understand what your question was about. What is it? Ultimately, there are levels and classes within that. Um, right. uh, my analogy is like football divisions there's a Premier League ultimately and then right. there's Division 1, Division 2 in essence um, um, and the the categories are spit as such so Class 3 which is known as the Boxster Cup ultimately uh, is okay. a really nice place for newcomers it's Boxsters, they're completely race prepared so it's not your road car It's it, in fact it's completely transformed as a road car um, but it is on treaded tyres Class right. two is the same with a gearbox difference, same power, same weight, but on slick tires, which is what I'm in now. And okay. then class one goes to 911s and Caymans, which are more powered, but also on slick tires. Mm. So there's like uh, a progression. Uh, yeah. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, so and what I'm in is, now is the same car. Right. Right. And and for you, you know, you've you've got to dizzy heights in dentistry. You know, the the work that you've done, um, the people that you're working with, you're, you're lecturing, you're, you're incredibly well respected in the profession. How did it feel Thank you. basically going into a, 
a field where you were a relative beginner, uh-huh. where yeah, you newbie. didn't have the experience, you didn't have all the things. And I, I guess it did it feel a little bit like going back to your, your early days of dentistry? Yeah, I mean, do you know, I, I was kindly invited to another podcast quite recently about performance and performance-driven individuals and, and how you try to push yourself. And I think ultimately, as we advance in age, um, our ability to... Um, take on new tasks slowly diminishes doesn't it because if you think about experience what that means is you know more and more about less and less weirdly right so um, Mm -hmm. you become quite well versed in what you do every day because you're doing it every day Um, but as you know through dance as you know through all my other side events and things that I've done in the past I've always had this underlying I like pushing myself in, Mm. in realms that aren't related to what I do day to day and um, it was it was a it was a challenge. I mean, you go from, I mean, you know, I've got a formula that I'll end on at the end of this podcast because I think it's a really sound one for everyone who's listening. But ultimately, you go from doing what you do to a relatively good standard or really comfortable standard to turning up. Uh, you know, people say stuff like, "You need to go to Park Fermi." You're like, "Is that French? What, like, what does that mean?" Like, <laughs> I've I've got. I mean, despite being in, I've heard it on Formula One all the time. Yeah, Park Fermi condition. What does it yeah. mean though? <laughs> like, where do I go? Like, am I allowed to do it? Like, so you go back to being right at the beginning of the pyramid. And um, ultimately, I think that's really healthy. I think mm-hmm. all of us as individuals don't put ourselves back into a situation. So I use this analogy. We write with our right hand all the time. Or hand writing. We don't even write anymore, don't we? We type. But we mm-hmm. use something called a pen, obviously, <laughs> to, to, to write. And we've got a favoured hand that we use. Um, I'm smiling because that's probably going to be fading as time goes on, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But h- how many of us pick up the pen with the left hand and just start trying mm. to write with that just to test our skills, our motor skills, our body? It feels really abnormal, doesn't it, when you try and do it with mm-hmm. your, with your yeah. other hand? Um, and it's kind of that. It's I try and get the pen in my left hand in life as much as I can, weirdly. Mm. Um, mm. But you know. And were you able to employ some of the things that you had to to learn and use in the early days of dentistry to get you on the right path in motorsport? Were, were there any kind of parallels between between how, how you kind of prepared yourself for this, this new world? No, uh, no. Right. Uh, right, right, right at the beginning, there was, there was nothing. I mean, you're so overwhelmed by this sensory, like complex and, and aura that's around you that everything is, is completely blocking out any kind of logic because <laughs> y- y- you kind of take it back. Like you're like, I'm about to go and race. Mm. Like, I'm, 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 I'm like, I've done qualifying, the lights are out. I mean, and I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd dread to know what the BPM was in that on that first. I would dread to know that. I was, you know, probably clinically it's heart attack level, isn't it? So, mm. um, um, so no, in the immediate beginning, no, I mean, you just, you're back into being in kindergarten again, really. And right. I, I sort of making an assumption, but I assume because I know some of the cars you've had, you would have done track days in your in your own cars or or other people's cars. And then I'm assuming that sort of gives you a little bit of a flavour. But I can imagine racing must be a totally different sort of experience environment as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know, I suppose the best way to try and draw some form of analogy if I was going to retrospectively at the time it didn't make sense at all is that your track days is kind of dental school you know you kind of mm. you're protected you're not allowed to overtake in certain areas um, right. you know you get instruction a lot of the time well ultimately it's your choice if you pay for additional instruction but probably uh, you know talking about the, the analogies that was the thing that I did at every track day I ever went on because of my thirst mm. for growth and ability to learn from right. someone more experienced. Um, mm. I kept doing that, kept doing that, kept getting feedback, kept growing, growing, growing. And slowly I was getting to a point where my 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 pace was starting to become, or it was starting to look like it could be competitive. Mm. And right. my coach, my race coach, and I'll give a big shout out to him, Dino Zamparelli, who's a previous Carrera Cup winner. Um, he's a champion in his own right. He's a fantastic instructor, but also, ultimately he's got incredible race pedigree. Um, he um, turned around and said, look, why don't we get you a, a test day in a race car? Why don't we get a test wow. day in a race car? Why don't we start putting in reference laps and see how far you go and see if we can refine your driving? Um, so the track days were like, I suppose, dental school. These test days were kind of like your FD training, if you want to call it that. And yeah. then 
racing was like dentistry. Uh, you're you're in the big big bad world at that point, you know. So are there are there any um, wow. are there any transferable skills? I'm thinking that obviously in dentistry, the the, the fine motor skills um, that you need to, to to achieve what you you do for your patients are are incredible. When you're when you're um, steering the car and the balance and the feel mm, of the yeah, car, is there yeah. is there is there a crossover between between that side of things? Incidentally, absolutely. I'd say more than fine motor. I mean, there is fine motor. Because yeah. you, as you get into a racing car, it's literally a 0 0.1 degree steering angle mm. Mm. can can set the car into a different balance. So there, there's yeah. that. I think hand or hand eye coordination is a, a really big thing. So right. you know where you need to go, and, and yeah. that you know you're you're giving the input to get to that point. So that's completely cross transferable. Because mm. when I'm doing a cavity preparation or if I'm doing a filling preparation, I know where I need to. I need to cut. And there's a hand-eye coordination feedback loop, isn't there? That's telling me mm. I'm in the right place. I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is completely transferable. Um, wow. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Well, have you had a, uh, I'm just always intrigued on this. So what's your sort of scariest moment so far? Cause I know you've done a fair few races now. So what's the, what's the one that made you think, Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's been loads, really. I mean, it's like every race. It's a scary one. In, 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 in the paddock, we call it the brown trouser moment for appropriate reasons. <laughs> Excellent. <yeah. laughs> um, but um, one, so the scariest moment without question was my first race. The lights, the lights. So what they, it's not like Formula One where it's like one, two, three, four, five, gone. Um, right. It's literally lights go on, lights go off, and you go. Um, right, okay. And, and the thing is, is you don't really truly know what's going to happen. Like, you don't know, is it going to be a mock countdown? Is it going to be... So actually, right, okay, on the first yeah. race, I'm not even looking at the lights. I'm looking at other people. <laughs> so I'm judging my reaction on their reaction. By their you reaction. Know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was the, the reason that was a scary moment was because... Um, uh, I, I, I This is the first time I thought I've been close to, 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 to heart attack or something like that, right? Because I'm... I'm re I, I am looking at the light and I'm focusing in and this part of my vision starts going completely black. And I'm like, oh. and all wow. I'm doing is where the, where the license plate for the, for the car is, mm. it's got a Pirelli um, sponsored license. Plate. I'm just focusing on one car's license plate. I've lost all the vision of everything else. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and then you go and then, and then oxygen comes and then you, you, you go and commit. So that was one of the biggest, scariest moments. The second biggest one was, um, I got, I got hit in, um, in a pretty high speed, uh, high speed, uh, crash in Brands Hatch. Um, uh, actually it was high speed coming into, but I'd break really hard and then got knocked into the car was sliding all over the place because oh. the coolant had leaked onto the tires. So I'd be driving oh. straight and the car was like, just, on itself um wow. that was pretty frightening that was pretty frightening um and, and it doesn't sound too much but when you're doing that 100 miles an hour plus yeah it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's significantly mm. worrying actually um but they i'll tell you they're I, the they're the biggest yeah. two scariest i think you lose the perception of speed don't you oh yeah I, I can the only time i can ever remember is once when i was <laughs> i was doing some speed that was uh on a anyway and yeah. um someone pulled out i think i was doing about 100 and something and someone pulled out on a motorway at about 70. And that was the first time, really, I sort of appreciated how quick you are going. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you sort of forget about it, don't you? I mean, as you say, you're probably so intent on your yeah. your racing and your positioning and changing I mean, gear and what else is going You're not even thinking about the speed, are you, I imagine? I, I, don't, I don't even think I've ever looked at the speedometer. Uh, uh, um, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's not in your... Immediate sign. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's no. Right. You imagine you must just forget about it's, it. You it's, just drive. It's, it's, it's extreme, but it's like watching no. Formula One on television and being at a, being at the, being at the, being, at the, being at the circuit, isn't it? What's if you watch Formula One on television, it just look, doesn't look that quick. No, no. no well, it just looks. Like, and, and and when you watch it live, all of a sudden they look like robots in the car because yeah. the head doesn't even move. Um, yeah. What's interesting about your point, um, um, Chris, is actually this is probably why I do this actually because. The issue with public roads and all of this is is the closing speeds. Us, there's such a disparity. Mm -hmm. There's such a disparity that anyone can pull out at any moment. Like you have no idea of what's going on. And and, and look, we've all we've all been there. I mean, I've been there where yeah. you know I've actually not realised 
how fast you go. Like you said, you're not doing it with the mal, you know, the maleficence yeah. of of trying to be a hero. You're doing it just mm. because you're trying to get to a destination. Instead, you're probably running mm. late, whatever the case. Mm. Um, oh, circuits is it's a it's controlled environment, danger. isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and 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 what's completely underestimated is the surface. The surface continuity aids grip. Mm. Whereas the road surface, well, I mean, German roads are fantastic, but British roads, mm. the average British B road has probably got more potholes than it has um, flat yeah. surfaces. Right. <laughs> so, so. so, so you're in you're in the second tier now, and you you were very modest. But I know when you're in the first tier, you podiumed a number of times, which is amazing for your first season. And yeah, I yeah, know you're yeah. finding this 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 season more challenging. How do you how do you measure success? I know we we, we met at the dentistry show. We were talking to to Bertie. Bertie Napier was there, and there was a great yeah. conversation between him being a um, you know very into his golf and how he kind of measures his success in golf. And you were talking about how you're finding it, but it can't just be about podiums, can it? So how do you kind of measure success beyond that? I mean, you know, it, it, it's so funny when, when, we, when we do these podcasts and, and, and things, you know, you always say, you. I mean, I'm pretty sure out of the 90 podcasts you've done, you'll all, they'll always say, oh yeah, it's not, about, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And I've said it myself in so many occasions, but ultimately when you're at the destination, if it's what you intended, you feel bloody yeah. good about yourself, don't you? Sorry for the language, but yeah. you're going to say, feel... if you've got, if you've got the little shiny thing in your hands, yeah, yeah. Oh, especially, oh, especially if you're first. Oh exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, was it, was it, was it Diego Maradona said that if you're second, you're the first of the losers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ultimately, and imagine the world in motorsport. Do you think they care about second? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's quite a begrudging result for many people. I mean, it's, it's unreal. Mm. Right. Um, but, you know, I think going back to this discussion, um, the first season I went there with no expectation, no anticipation. And ultimately I got two seconds, uh, a third place out of seven races. And the last race I was 0 0.028 seconds, which is 28 hundredths of a second away from my first win. We crossed the line at the same time, practically. Wow. Uh, and I was pushed onto the grass because he was just, an awful driver, frankly. Um, I think it's interesting um, that you remember you remember that down to four decimal places. That hurts, yeah, yeah. yeah. It? I mean, no question, no question. <laughs> so, so, so I had all of this really like uh, I would I would say, and, and my coach definitely says it. The trajectory of progression in my first season was probably quite unheard of in terms of the, the club and mm. and and what other people have done in the past that he's coached and things mm -hmm. like that so mm. that made me that gave me an anticipation for myself i come into the second season where you've got i think one of the drivers on the grid's been driving for 20 years wow. in in this category um you're in a completely different level in terms of performance the performance envelope is is much higher but mm. also the i don't know how to put this in technical but the sketchiness of the car has gone up so if you, uh, this is probably quite hard to explain, but a treaded tire has the grooves and those grooves flexed, which give grip. And they also mm -hmm. give you the indication when grip's being lost. A slick tire has no tread. So when the grip's lost, it's lost. There's no, uh, oh, we're kind of on the limit. We're on the limit. It, it's just gone. Um, right. So, and that's been the hardest thing for me, as well as the fact that the competition's gone up. So when I was in my first season, I had no anticipation, but hoped for, some form of success the second season i was like right i'm, I'm gonna punch really hard here and i'm gonna mm. i'm gonna give it my all and then i've been you know the, the bottom for the first first race and a half I've, i was practically you know bottom three bottom four um of of, of the races and um it's been a, again gone back to kindergarten it's been a wake-up call um mm. and at the time it's quite stressful but ultimately it's hugely rewarding because now the now the mountains to climb again you know um, yeah yeah so mm. yeah What's your what's your relationship like with a fade is a hard word. It's I don't mean fade in the sense that you, you're failing, but when things don't go well, what, what how do you cope with that? What's your relationship with that like? Um, I okay. So in the general scheme of life, um, I welcome failure. So failure is a really good thing. Failure is a thing that allows you to grow. Failure is a thing that allows you to reflect. Failure is a thing that allows you to just stop the rat race and look inside and, and, and try and work out what's going on. Um, I, but that doesn't mean that I don't get frustrated by failure. It doesn't mm. mean that I don't expect more mm. of us. I mean, if we're talking about high performance and high performing individuals that you reflect on in, in, in the rest of the world, Michael Jordan, like it was, it's not good enough. And that's the end of story. Like, um, mm. you know, if you've seen the, the fantastic documentary, The Last Dance, which oh. I probably watch once, once every six months to reignite the, 
the energy and the passion, you know. Um, ultimately, you know, when it's not good enough, it's not good enough. And some people respond well to that, some don't. And for me, I respond mm. to, okay, it's not good enough, I need to push on. But ironically, um, so, with Michael Jordan across his career, he lost more games than he won. Yeah, yeah. So he's yeah. heralded mm. as being the greatest of all time, but across his career, he 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 failed to use that word <laughs> more more, more, time. more more times than he won. And and, and it's funny because, like you say, you need to get used to it. And ultimately, failing more times than you win makes you the greatest of all time. Mm. You because if you even if you do win lots of things, you won't achieve all of those goals and, and the, the amazing thing about Mark Jordan, I mean he had every record under the sun but he didn't catch you know people like uh, Larry Bird because they had taken their team to success and that is the real moment that made you the greatest not mm-hmm. as an, like an individual like the, the, the Lionel Messi's and the Cristiano Ronaldo's Michael Jordan you know all of these individuals mm. they hold success because of their own accolades but because they've driven their teams to success too This episode is brought to you with our charity partner, Wells on Wheels. Did you know that many girls in Indian villages miss out on education because they have to spend hours fetching water for their families? Wells on Wheels is changing that with the water wheel invention. A water wheel is a rollable drum that can carry five times as much water as a single bucket, making it easier for adults to collect more water in a single trip without risking injury and freeing up young girls from never having to collect water again. With the help of Wells on Wheels, over 2,000 girls are now attending school regularly. Join the cause and help the lives of ambitious girls today. For just £28, a water wheel can transform their futures immediately. Learn more and donate at wellsonwheels.co.uk. Now back to the episode. Mm. On, the, on the team point, Shiraz, as a dentist working in a dental practice, you work in a team. So if, if the receptionists don't do their job well, um, then you're not going to get a well-prepared patient come to your surgery. If your nurse isn't an extension of you, it's clunky when you're in a clinical environment, blah, blah, blah. So you've got a team environment that, that's quite well known. When, when you're racing, when you're driving, you're alone in the car. But how important is the team that's not in the car with you to make sure that you feel good and, and they're supporting you? Is there a real team dynamic in motorsport? I mean, absolutely. If it wasn't for my team, you know, and a bit of a shout out to them. So Super Tune Motorsport, Colin Tester, who ran my car last year, along with Race Drive and Dino Zamparelli uh, and Eden, who were, who were involved this year. Um, ultimately, if they don't do their prep work, if they don't do their homework, if they don't go over the car with a fine tooth comb, if they're not running the car in, in their own time, if they're not checking all changes, if they're not doing all of these things, I might get machinery on the day that's not good enough, frankly. Um, yeah. ultimately, mm. so, so we, you're ultimately in a position where, um, you're then stuck because of the machinery. And is that any different to, how you doing chap? You well, it's right. good to see you, Ravi. Um, another one of the drivers, it's it just turned up, so sorry about that. Mm. Um, but you, you're, you're in a situation where everyone has a moving part that mm. contributes to the overall success of that team. And if one part doesn't do their job, mm. I, mm. ultimately you won't have the machinery to do what you need to do. Um, and not being not being super dramatic, I suppose the answer is you truly do have your life in someone else's hands, don't you? Because if they yeah, yeah. if they haven't done do. what they should do with a car and it locks do. up or whatever it is, then you could be ex Shiraz. I mean, it's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It really yeah, yeah. is truthfully, isn't it? That you're you are trusting someone to deliver your safety. That, that's that's exactly what it is, and. Um, you know, I mean, ultimately that, that that principle exists in life, right? Like when we when someone gives you way on the road, we have yeah. an inherent. I mean, society is built on trust, <laughs> right? You have trust that they're not going to run you down. Uh, ultimately, mm. hopefully, it wouldn't happen very regularly. But you put faith in someone <laughs> else's hands on a day to day. It's kind of the same. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you has this experience? Your has your motor sport experience reversed back into dentistry? Have you learned things? For motorsport that you've been using dentists there's there's lots of people that have different dynamics to them so um you know you, you work with Kai Kai, Kai Ferran who, who came on and joined us and obviously he he loves music loves guitar uh, and he says how he finds that very relaxing but he believe, believes there's been a, there's an influence back in you know Doug Watt a similar experience are, are you starting to see anything that feeds back into your clinical work yeah yeah I mean in terms of um the motor skills and whatever I think we've done our bit within our clinical training to understand that to the best degree. Mm. I think one, one thing that 
Um, if I was going to talk negatively about my career, perhaps I suffer with lack of patience sometimes. I'm, I'm, I'm a high, I'm a high performance driven individual. And when I quite don't get something, I don't, I wouldn't say I get frustrated, but it's like, oh, you can feel the, the tension building up. And what motorsport has taught me, particularly this season, because it's not really been successful or whatever that outline is, um, it's, it's taught me back patience. But going back to the point, it, mm. it is absolutely, absolutely relevant for being, being a, a performing individual. And I'd say any dentist in the world is a high performing individual because you are being trusted yeah. with uh, 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 an instrument that can be harmful to provide care. Mm. Ultimately, and I think that risk is overlooked all the time, isn't it? So mm. you're being trusted on a regular basis that you're going to do the best that you can for that patient. And, you know, if you do not have sufficient downtime, if you do not have the opportunity to spread your wings a little bit and, and let yourself just the shoulders fall down a bit, you know, if you don't have that, your ability to remain oxygenated in times of pressure, your ability to cope with those moments because baseline stress is increased, body inflammation, I mean, it all starts becoming the same thing. Um, so yeah, ultimately it's, it's a combination of those factors, really. Brilliant. Brilliant. So tell us what's, what's happening this weekend. You were saying you're up in Northwest so, Wales in Anglesey. We are in Anglesey, which is, uh, North, it's literally the coast of, of, of North Wales. Yeah. Um, and we're at race weekend number three for, for the season. So that's race, uh, five and six. Um, and what we've got is we've got, a, a, a this type, first time of, of the season, actually, we've got a bit of a rigorous program where there's, there's uh, light testing and, and, and track day today. There's testing tomorrow where we're trying to get timings and, and, and really start pushing on. So on, tr on, on track sort of days, <laughs> You, you have to really respect the other people that are maybe here for their first time. There's a, there's a differing level of, of understanding. So you have to really be considerate to, to where other people are in their driving journey. Um, testing yeah. is all racing drivers, all racing cars. You don't even show your driving license. You have to show your racing license, ultimately. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday is qualifying race one and Sunday race two. So, uh, yeah, oh, I thought right, it was okay. when, when you guys sent me the date for, for the, for the link, I was like, we couldn't think of a more perfect setting really for, for the, yeah, uh, no. for the podcast, wow. for the topic, for the topic, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, really exactly. good. This motorsport license, you've mentioned it. I didn't know I'm being a dullard. I didn't know. Well, what's that then? Tell me yes, about that. Yes. So as you take your driving license to be able to be a competitive racer, you need to take a odds license, which is. The association of something motorsport, whatever it is. Obviously, I don't, I don't know enough about it. Ultimately, but you, there is a there's a governing body that you right. need to register with, which are called Motorsport UK, and right. you have to do a test to prove that you're proficient to be on track. And wow. there's a written part, and there's a and there's a a, phys, a, a physical driving. Does someone go with you? Or I mean, is, yeah, that, yeah, is yeah. it like it really yeah, is like an all yeah, driving? Oh, wow. Well. There's, there's, wow. there's like a except you're going around a place called Paddock Hill Bend, which is a really frightening corner um, at Brian's Hatch, which I had to do in the wet as well. Oh my God, it was so stressful. Uh, I don't really drive in the wet that often, but if you're entering the world in the, in the UK, in Wales at best of times, it's probably raining. Get used to it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got to get used to driving in the wet a little bit, yeah. You, you better get used to it. Wow, can you imagine yeah. that? Imagine that as a job. What do you do? I'm a, what was it, a racing car instructor, licensed tester. I mean, flipping Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what, it's funny that you said tester. So um, this is not an exaggeration or a joke. My uh, my uh, team that last year, Supertune Motorsport, it's run by a chap called Colin Tester, who is a tester or a grade A arts instructor for race school. I mean, you couldn't think, if, if I was to go branding, that is like a branding opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. Colin Tester, arts instructor. He's a tester, I mean, that, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, you could be, that would be... Yeah, yeah. that would be a successful Come to whatever, the inverted commas tester. tester. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, 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 exactly. I love it when you get people that, that, that their job suits them. So yeah. we, we have a cleaning company that look after our office and the woman that calls it's called Velina. So she's Velina the cleaner. <laughs> and and, and my, 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 my Turkish barber is Ali. So he's Ali Barber. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, there's, they're, there's lots and, of I mean, them out there. Awful one. I'm sorry for the, for the dull tone of the... Uh, the, the, the um, <laughs> podcast i'm going to drop it a notch here but who invented the flush oh yes yeah, oh, thomas, thomas crapper, thomas crapper. 
<laughs> it is the best, isn't it? <laughs> sensational, sensational. <laughs> I mean, that, not only do boys find toilet humour hilarious anyway, but that, <laughs> God Almighty! I mean, what the first time I had that, I was in stitches for weeks, like weeks, absolutely yeah. blurred. Yeah. Brilliant. Like what's oh, um, dude. what's what's the big hairy goal? Where 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 do you hope to see your your motorsport career rolling in the next three, five, seven years? Where's it where's it going? There's the hairy big goal. Ha- no, <laughs> big hairy, but hairy beard. Yeah. Um, where's where's the goal? Um, okay, so I think I absolutely uh, want to enjoy. I think as as we advance in age, ultimately, I have to stop being co- like consistently uh, obsessed with goals and you know i think this goes into a higher topic where goal setting is is, is equally good by measure as, as it is bad uh, because you mm-hmm. create a ceiling to yourself you create an expectation whatever but um i think so the first goal of mine through however long i do this for and i do have a 10-year motorsport pyramid plan ultimately um but the the goal is is really stop obsessing about results and really just take yourself back to what a privilege. Um, Just enjoy what the a moment. Privilege. Yeah, what a privilege. Uh, this is a life. Goal. How many people can say they get to do their absolute bucket list life goal type things in their life? You know, mm. this is this is the pinnacle of, of life goals for me. Um, mm. So I, I think I really need to enjoy the journey. But ultimately, I think what I need to do is uh, two to three years within this club series at the moment to really understand um race craft to really um do my apprenticeship years if you want to put it that way mm. to, to to become competitive and then mm. ultimately i want to start entering um you know porsche gd and porsche ag uh, uh, uh races which are like things like carrera cup they've got something called the gt4 sprint race and that's on the um well, this is showing my age but do you remember toka touring cars they're just called touring cars now. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that follows the touring car package they do things like british gt which is quite oh, heavily okay. publicized so th- that's the that's the aspiration for the trajectory of where i want to be um no. if it was a hard goal th- i can be very uh, very open about this and i've got no insistent need of, of wanting to be a champion of any nature i think like with most things in life if you work hard enough at the graph those results will come uh, i'm not mm. i'm not I wouldn't say that's a goal and I'll quit. That's that's not mm. where I'm at. Yeah, it's yeah. about maximizing my performance as always. I mean, that's a ongoing and enjoying comment, it. Isn't it? And that's the other thing, isn't it? Enjoyment yeah. has got to be mm. uh, one of the things. The goal is to still enjoy it. Yeah, so as it doesn't become a chore. It's, it's that's a, that's a really hard one um, because I, I mean I was trying to work out when you enjoy these things because you're so pressured in like qualifying and then uh, 45 minutes later there's a race. And then, you know, I'm looking after sponsors or I'm talking with the Porsche uh, club uh, uh, people or my team. Like, it, you'll, you'll be, it's unreal how quick a weekend goes. And yeah, there is a, probably a moment where you get to back, sit back and watch it again. And as you know, we've been documenting a series really well with, with Oliver and the FTA mm-hmm. media team, which is really, really lovely. Uh, with with the aspiration of trying to capture those moments and 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 show people what it is like and and, and the the you know someone asked me yesterday uh, over dinner what's the what's your goal for that and I was like there isn't a goal un- other than to document what it is like an absolute amateur to get into something mm. competitive yeah. uh, competitive mm. and 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 quite mm. quite quite scary. I think really. what's really nice for people as well is that um, I think there's a message in there about ev- everything we do it doesn't have to be goal focus it doesn't have to be mm. you know about the outcome there's some stuff you should just do nice because you enjoy it and it's yeah. a release yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, fun yeah, yeah. and it doesn't have to necessarily have some overarching driving purpose as yeah. to where it ends up it doesn't it's, have to be I, I do it because yeah, no. i enjoy it yeah. I, and, and do you know I, I i wonder if that's the you know every yin has its yang doesn't it mm. i wonder if that's the overarching um uh, deficiency of all of these things like performance podcasts or goals or all of this information where you're talking about people that are inspirational that all of a sudden we all feel like we have to do that but actually no we don't have to achieve no. something certain we just have to go on the journey that we are destined to or whatever we believe is is our journey and let's yeah. be very very open uh, we're talking about motorsport i can tell yeah. you my life goal it's to create more time to be with my family end of mm. Uh, that's mm. like I want to be able to be there for all the things there are. Uh, I know that sounds quite contraindicatory to to being at a race circuit this weekend, but ultimately it's to to generate um, freedom in what I do 
day to day so that I can spend more time mm. with them. Mm. And I think I, mean, I think I, you're I'm, right. I, th- I think there's so much stuff out there where people are um directly or indirectly pressured Chasing or something. putting pressure on themselves yeah to to yeah, kind of you know yeah. achieve and and that and i think mm. people should just give themselves permission just to enjoy stuff and it's okay yeah. just to have a hobby with with no with no purpose it's just for yeah fun. yeah yeah and mm. have i have i inadvertently contributed to that because i'm quite active on socials i've obviously done lots with you know in, in the dental press and publications and have i inadvertently contributed to that not knowingly so but i can openly say mm. that obviously people that follow you will be like oh i i might to to be a success and i hate that word in general success i have to do what what so and so is yeah. doing rather yeah. than just being able to say look do you know what i feel like watching netflix for eight hours today yeah, and that's why I'd be sitting sitting and, in my pants. Say, yeah. If that's what you want to do, that's that that's equally fine. But I think there's so much out there mm. that kind of says, you know, to to be successful, you know, to you have must this, to have, have an outlet. Or it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, the problem yeah. is, by virtue of that, all you're ever doing is looking at the one percent and feeling yeah. dissatisfied. Yeah. You? yeah. Your whole life is. And one the brutal that reality achieved. is, most people either aren't prepared to give what it takes, or just don't want to, and that's okay. That's that's perfectly yeah. all right. And, just to kind and, of live your life and enjoy yourself. And I think I didn't mean sorry, didn't mean to interrupt at all. But I think that exact point that you've just said, like you know, we started this whole discussion about how to feel throwing yourself into something where you're basically learning how to walk again. Mm. If, if one of the salient points that I want everyone to take away really is the fact that life is in balance with situations where you are as good as you can be at something and situations where you are completely challenging yourself. And you're absolutely right, Chris. If you're challenging yourself 98% of the time, you just become depressed. You just feel like you're never achieving. You're never Mm -hmm. getting to your goals. So it's about striking a balance between things that you're good at, things that you know, things that you do well, and giving yourself, taking yourself out of that comfort zone, as we know is a great battle for Alzheimer's and, you know, other Mm -hmm. sort of mental conditions that can affect us later in life. So being able to stress the other parts of the, the system or the brain mm. or the, the function is important. But if you get that balance mm. wrong, you are just totally, you're just always underwhelmed by your achievement yeah. in life. And yeah, I, right. I think that has, that has been a summary a bit of my life as well, actually, yeah. if I look, look internally. So I a hundred percent agree. Mm. And we could talk all day, but I've yeah. got a um, box set on Netflix to go and watch now. So um, <laughs> to, I'm just going to order, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to order the pizza. I've, I've got eight, eight hours, eight hours of just sitting there smudging out, but that's, yeah. but that's great. Isn't it? Like if you yeah, get to do that, be. It should if be. you get to do that, is that is that is that more successful than someone who is is in the press and blah, 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 because they get to do what they want when they want? Is that yeah, the dream? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, and uh, join us for another podcast <laughs> 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 when we discuss the definition yeah. of success. We're going to turn up the base. We're going to turn up the base, and it's going to be called deep and meaningful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Now, what, what we're You've been working on that. You've been working on that radio a big voice. armchair doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, we know you've got. A, we know you've got a busy weekend ahead, but we can't let you go because we always finish in the same way. We always ask our guests the same. Two I questions. can't remember what is other. And you've asked these before but but in the context so, of the conversation we've had today you might answer them in, in yeah. a different way so the first one so, is if you could be the fly on the wall sorry go on go on can i just what, can i end on one thing i said there was one yeah, like yeah. conclusion statement that i wanted yeah. i'm really sorry. oh I'm yeah, this, going so, away yeah. With your this is your big this is your big moment uh-huh. yeah, this is, well, yeah oh yeah. and we've lost uh, the signal uh, that's it he's <laughs> gone he's gone um <laughs> you know just to take away for everyone the uh, the motorsport thing was absolutely a live dream but to achieve any goal, or and I, and I think this is totally synonymous with life. It, it, it the, the following applies really, and this is dentistry to a T. Um, you, uh, as soon as you start a new skill, you remove first things first. You remove all your ego. How good you are at something? Do you think anyone at this race circuit gives an, two monkeys that I've uh, got the uh, prestigious aesthetic dentistry? No one cares. No one cares. No one knows. Your CV's not on the table. Take all of your ego out of the situation. Surround yourself by mentors that ultimately are going to be the people that you aspire to be or grow with. And then put in that hard graft work ethic, push, push your level, push your boundaries, um, remain disciplined and, and do things even when you don't want to do them, really push towards that goal. And then when it comes to do the performance or the competition or that filling or that restoration or whatever it is, do so humbly without any anticipation of success and Mm. if you do that the outcome will pay for itself because uh, ultimately luck the letter word luck yeah i do believe that you know luck is when hard work meets an opportunity but ultimately whatever you believe 
when that situation comes, it will either happen or it won't. The hard work mm. you've done already is in the path now. You've just got to go and perform. So I think if I was going to, and, and going through this motorsport journey has really been able to solidify that notion to me. Remove ego, learn from the best, smash smash your work ethic, do hours and hours a day that you have to. And then when it comes to perform, do so, and really importantly, without anticipation of success. And ultimately, cool. you'll then get the best out of yourself. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Really good. No, I think that's, like I say, I think that's a great, great tip for people. And like you say, that applies across the board. Yeah, it applies yeah. for for you in motorsport. But I think that's a great Anything. principle. For... In dentistry, owning a yeah, practice, yeah, yeah. entering for awards, it's all the same. It's all the yeah. same. Mm. Yeah, no, I love that. Love that. So you're a fly on the wall. Where would you like to be? <laughs> this time. Um, Dun, this dun, time, dun, yeah, dun. ultimately it was a, a different situation last time, wasn't it? I think this, uh, okay, so this, th- I'm, I, it's really hard not to be awkward in these ones, isn't it? Because you, you, you want to be in the most awkward place at the, at the right time, don't you? But <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, what is going on with this? Uh, let's stick on the motorsport thing. It's, it's a good one. What is going on with this electric car thing? I mean, mm. it's uh, 2030, it was agreed somewhere that there's nothing else going to exist and we all know that's absolute tosh but how could how can you pretend that you're going to change and then you get things like you know biofuels synthetic fuel production there's a good there's a good trading tip there for a couple of people who want to find out more about that but um um ultimately that that whole oh we get this is what we're going to do and that's the end of that i i, I don't i don't really mm. agree with that and mm. there's how many how many notions of that brexit i'd like to know what person Thought what that was, was a great uh, idea yeah yeah and, and like now we get like uh, i mean I'm, I'm talking on a very selfish level but going through the other countries um um uh, queue is a little de- press, depressing when you when you've just flown 34 30 40 minutes down the road yeah. and you're just sort of mm. sitting there like mm, blimey um uh, and and maybe it's the lack of understanding of the greater goals so probably probably the brexit negotiation thing um to cool. know what they really wanted what's the yeah. real reason you didn't well, want to it, provide money for the NHS. Let's be real about it, right? Yeah. What did yeah, you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was the big? So that'd be quite mm. Brexit negotiations. Quite an interesting one, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. And if you mm. can meet, if you can meet somebody, um, you, you're sitting there. You turn around. You've got your espresso, and that person sitting opposite you. Who would you like that to be? <laughs> I think uh, having mentioned him today, because I remembered uh, I mentioned Ertin Senna last time, which I think was quite a fitting yeah. thing for this. But I think I'll change it uh, because for, for variability. I think it's all about performance-driven individuals for me, and 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 Michael Jordan, having mm, mentioned uh, him in this podcast, I think he's, you know, like if you can just distill that drive for success mm. with, despite in the face of failure, and and mm. and taking the team like the selflessness of wanting to take the team along with you, which ultimately was selfish too, which is okay, yeah. um, just just being able to distill that essence of I'm going to do whatever it takes. I got beaten up when we played, you know, in, in the, in the mm. 92 game, I got beaten up by, by Rodman who ended up being a teammate at one point, like going through those trials and tribulations. I'm not strong enough um, driving your team. Um, and, and also, you know, he's he, in the, in, 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 in press, he's sometimes made out to be a little bit of a tyrant, but I don't think he was. He just asked everything of others that he would ask of himself mm. and that's not tyranny that's goal setting that's he was future. relentless that's, mm. he yeah, was yeah. Relentless. Relentless, he, yeah he 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 would not back off and like you say to his credit he didn't ask anything of anybody else that he was prepared to do and he, and, mm. and he himself. did himself as well uh, but his standards were just ridiculous essence of jordan so yeah sounds like an i mean is it, uh, are, are they yeah exactly are, the, are are they are they ridiculous by is it ridiculous by the notion of current population current standards or did he just completely isolate and know what he wanted oh it is i think it's, i think i think it's ridiculous by the judgment of others he he was happy and prepared to do it because he he just wanted to be the best i think it's a generational thing as well mm. it's quite interesting we could and go you know, on because i read something about oxford student union yesterday but i won't even go down that route oh well you got it now you said it now You've got to know. <laughs> uh, okay, right. there's a very quick one. Did you? There was an article like Oxford students. Um, you know, they have the debating society where it's yeah. made to look like the House of Commons, and that was like training. Blah 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 blah. Um, the academics have just um, yesterday. I think it was yesterday. They released uh, and said, "Look, we have to live in a society where it's okay to take an opposing view." 
And because what happened was that in the Oxford Debating Society, because some people didn't agree with one of the debaters, they left the society and the guys were saying, the whole point of debating Isn't and the whole the point of, of debate society is the fact <laughs> of you allow opposing views to have conversation rather than just polarised views. And, I, and I, it, for me, it really resonated because I thought, flip, that's, that's the danger. Generation, th that's generation, that's, 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 the world just it was your right it was your, your michael jordan thing about the fact of that there, there seems to be sometimes isn't there where where he was driven mm. and purposeful and we are sitting there going he was driven and purposeful whereas some people now say oh no he was a bully crazy and he was, he was yeah, crazy. do you know what i mean anyway sorry i took us on a bit yeah. of a no, bit of a sideways amazing, move there no no i like that isn't that isn't that the world today is that yeah if oh, you yeah. have an opposing view to what is the current trend or notion yeah you're, you're vilified being yeah, absolutely, absolutely incorrect. Uh, uh, that's yeah. really interesting thought. Really interesting yeah, sorry, thought. sorry for jumping on that, shows, but oh, it sort I of struck that. me I with the it. essence of Jordan. But I do quite like the idea of that being an aftershave. It might smell yeah. of sweat though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or sweaty shoes, even worse. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> I tell you what, I bet we all wish we'd had a pair of Michael's shoes, don't we? Because man, they oh. didn't they go for a couple of million, oh, yeah. couple of million dollars or something. Yeah, man. Anyway, <laughs> right, Shiraz, we'll, we'll leave you to enjoy your weekend. Have a very, very successful weekend. Stay safe. Thank you, Chad. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll look forward and, and, to catch up with you really soon. And, and thanks for all of your efforts. You guys are, are, are top boys and you're really contributing to the dental profession in such a positive light. I said it at the beginning and I'm saying it at the end because, you know, uh, oh, we you. as dentists really um, sometimes become so focused on our uh, bread and butter clinical. These skills are uh, in, invariably, I mean, they're unsurmountably important for, for our careers. So thank you so much, as always. I oh, appreciate that. Oh, thanks, Shers. Appreciate that. Excellent. Keep well. Stay safe. Cheers, yeah. mate. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Shers. Drive Cheers. safe. Tata. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dentology, where we discuss the business of dentistry. If you like what you heard, please do subscribe where you found this episode. That would be amazing. And also follow us on Instagram.